Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara and today we're taking a snapshot of a midnight dragon ride. So we're using Little Dragon, Tiny Fairy Tale, Starry Sky Stencil, Puffy Cloud Backdrop Landscape, and just a little bit cut with the camera of Pixie Dust Cardstock, parts of the Magic Iris camera add-on and the pull tab add-on. And here's the camera in Mermaid Cardstock and the Magic Iris, three of the rings in white, one cut with a flux capacitor, three stabilizers, and three sausage pieces in black licorice, a shimmer cardstock panel in Tropical Pack, and this is pieces from the Build-A-Castle in both Peacock and Mermaid, and then Pixie Dust for the flags, and this is from Build an Aquarium, also in Mermaid cardstock. So I'm going to begin by ink blending with some life-changing blender brushes in Faded Jeans, Chip Sapphire, and Black Soot Distress Ink. And I realized that it would be easier to keep that circle in the center with a piece of tape on the back. So I wanted it inked up the same way as the rest of the camera because it will be behind the camera. But when the iris is open, I want to be able to see a consistent look to, to the whole scene. So I'm going back and forth, layering mostly between black soot and chip sapphire, kind of giving it a dark blue black sky and fading it down towards the bottom to the, uh, the mermaid color. So sort of an ombre look. And then once I have that all blended the way I want, I'm taking the Starry Sky Stencil, and I'm gonna use that with just a regular basic modeling paste, and I'm gonna put that to the side, squirt a little out, and I'm taking some Lawn Fawn Prisma Glitter, and I'm gonna add it to that modeling paste, and I'm going to kind of smash it in there so that it's, it's all together and I just started with a little but you'll see I, I add a lot more to the side because I realize I'm going to need more to get all around that camera and on the back panel so now I'm just pulling it all across the the camera and I don't need it really at the bottom so I'm focusing more on the the top three quarters of the camera and there it is. And now that I have that done, I still have enough paste and I'm going to spread it around my back panel. Now, again, this is the shimmer cardstock. It's the blue or the aqua color from the tropical pack. So I realized at the end that I really only needed to go around the edges because the rest of the panel will be covered with the camera. So uh, once I realized that, I kind of focused there and there it is. And I'm gonna set those two to dry. And meanwhile, we'll put together the Magic Iris. I changed out my white cardstock for black licorice on those rings. And so it's a matter of putting the three sausage pieces in those slits on the piece that has the cutouts. And I'm using the 3 16 inch glue dots and putting them on, there's a little X on each of those sausages. So I'm putting that glue dot right on top of that X and then placing another ring uh, right on top. But I wanna make sure that my sausage pieces are all aligned up with the ring. And then I can put that piece on top. So slip in those sausage pieces, put on the dots and set a ring on top. Then I can flip the whole thing over and put on the stabilizers. The die that cut the holes also created marks to indicate where to put the stabilizers. But since it's black licorice, I thought I'd show you them in a white gel pen so that you could see where I'm going with this. I put on some adhesive all the way across and put that stabilizer right to the edge of the curve on the inside of the circle. Now I have those on there, I can flip it back over and I'm going to put the camera add-on pull tab to the right of one of the stabilizers, uh, which creates a V between them. And now I'm just placing a ring right on top, putting some adhesive on those stabilizers, 
and I'm going to bend them over and not too tight. I'm not going all the way to the end this time of that ring. I'm just going uh, sort of near the stitching line, just keeping it loose so that the iris can work. Now it's time to stamp out the images. So the little dragon and the princess from Tiny Fairy Tale with jet black ink, and that is Copic friendly. So I'm just stamping that on my Misty several times and it's time to start coloring. So I'm going to focus just on that dragon. And there are so many color combinations uh, that I could have used, but I'm going to go with a aqua and purple dragon today. I'm deciding which areas I want purple with the V01. And so his wings and horns and a bit of his tail and then his tummy. And then with a BG-11, I will do whatever's left so that he's uh, mostly going to be an aqua colored dragon. I'm going to find the shadows now with a BG-13. And it's a nighttime scene, but I'm going to decide that the, uh, the moonlight or the starlight is shining on him so that it's brightest on the upper right. Uh, but you know, uh, with this scene, I really, it doesn't matter where, where you go with those shadows. So I think what I'm really focusing on is, is giving him some shape because he's rounded and, and that's what I want to do is show that he's rounded. All right. Well, this is the BG 23 and I'm blending out from that BG 13 with that. And I'm just kind of speckling the color on some little dots uh, to bring it out towards the lighter color and also adding some to those wings and just make it look like he's all one and then speckled on with the BG 11 and now finishing up with the BG 10 on the very lightest parts I'm trying to just blend it in a little bit more now I can come in with that V 17 this is going to be my darkest of the purple colors and give him some texture, some shadow on the purple areas and, and also just show that uh, there's some kind of scaly look going on there. Blend that out with a V12. I'm just gonna continue to bring down that, that uh, dotted look or bring, uh, bring it into the center of those purple areas. And then I will do the same thing with a V15, and that will bridge the gap between the dark and the light, so between the V17 and that V12. Now with a B34, so a blue color, this is kind of the way I'm going to bring those two colors together. So right now they're very separated, and I want them to be it looked like he was meant to be both aqua and purple. So this B color, this blue, uh, kind of helps me to do that. So I used a B34, and now I'm bringing that lighter with the B32, just speckling around, putting in some of the shadows, uh, and then blending that blue in with the BG or the V, depending on where it, where it is. And I just went back and forth between the BG and the B colors just to kind of go, uh, to get a nice blend. And then once I have that the way I like it, I'm now bringing back that V17 and I'm adding dots to kind of cross the divide. So now he's got some uh, purpley, scaly parts to his aqua area. and. And the blue really helped to kind of make that transition work better. Blend that a little more with the V12. And there he is. He's all set. Uh, after I colored the little girl, and she's colored in reds and blue violets, I cut them both out using scissors because I want to kind of uh, move it around a little bit. So since she's riding the dragon, I want her between his two wings, so I'm cutting that back wing off. You wouldn't see it because she is in front of that, and there she is. She can now sit between his two wings, and 
I decided to pull the wing down so that you could see her even more. And he's going to be flying. So here he is sitting straight. And then here he is in the air flying. So you really get to see the little girl with his wing down. Well, let's start putting this whole thing together. So I'm ink blending with a little faded jeans, uh, the, the castle parts, just to kind of round them out a bit. And I didn't even have to cut all the pieces. Just want to indicate that there is a castle that's poking up uh, over the the cloud line so it's a very tall castle and uh, the little girl is going to be flying with her pet dragon above the castle so yeah she's got to get out of that castle once in a while so <laughs> her dragon is gonna gonna help her do that so I'm gonna figure out where everything's gonna go on the camera and I'm using that cloud border to kind of see how things are going to look, uh, where they end up, and just position everything where, where I want it to go. Once I have that where I like it, I'll start gluing everything down. And I want to use the glue because it's very strong, and I have that modeling paste in the background, and I want to make sure that it adheres well. Also putting on the little details like the the windows and making sure everything's just right and clipping off the little excess pieces that are uh, coming off the bottom. All right, now I can put on those tiny little flags and I'm using glue again uh, because it just it's going to hold it well and it, you know the glue tube that tip is just uh, helps you to get a really fine line so it's very easy to get those flags on there and now here are the clouds and we've got our base all set now this is the flash that comes with the camera add-on set and i cut that out of silver sparkle cardstock from the holiday pack now i can take off the circle from the middle of the camera set that aside i have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card and i'm going to put that back panel on there with some adhesive tape make sure it's all straight i'm going to put the iris on the back of the camera and so i can put adhesive all around the top of that iris and then put it in a closed position so that i know where it's going to sit on the card because when it's closed, it needs to be where the tab is fully on the card. Uh, it's not hanging off at all so that uh, you can get it in an envelope. So I am actually going to put some foam tape on the back of the iris. Now you only want to put adhesive on those stabilizers because you need area for the mechanism to move. And so this is where I did it a little wrong. So I just told you that you need to have it closed to make sure that the tab is on the card without coming off the side. And here I am positioning it with the iris open, which I need to do to see where that center circle is going to be. But after I get that camera positioned on the panel, all right, well, meanwhile, I'm going to put the dragon and his little friend onto that center piece. And the reason I popped up my iris with foam tape is because I have that modeling paste on there, which is a little thick, and I didn't want that to interfere with opening and closing the iris on my middle circle. All right, well, here I realize that I have the uh, camera nicely centered in the middle, but <laughs> the tab is too high, so I need to pull it off and pull out that center circle, and I just need to bring the camera down. Make sure now, with the iris closed, that it's at a good place on the card, and it is. So I can open up the iris and put in my center circle. 
the Magic Iris Camera pull tab add-on has a lens, and this is the outside of that lens. And I tried a couple of colors and decided on Peacock for that. And now I'm going to put the button together, which is Peacock and Silver Sparkle, and some more Silver Sparkle to go behind the little hole there. Just put some glue on the edges and put it on the camera there. I'm gonna put a little foam tape to build up this button, actually two pieces, so that it rises up to the height. It's actually a little bit lower, but it's a good distance for the camera. It looks a little 3D that way. And I'm gonna put some peacock cardstock on top of that pull tab, and this piece of pull tab also comes with the Magic Iris camera add-on because it needs to be longer than the regular Magic Iris. Here it is opening and closing, and what to do with the sentiment? Well, I thought this looked perfect in the center of the iris, but uh, this is not the time to do that. I should have done that a while before, before assembling everything. But I decided to chance it, so I put it in the misty and uh, made sure it was well powdered. <laughs> and then using some clear ink, I'll ink up that sentiment and stamp it down. Now there is adhesive all around that top circle, so I have to be careful when I lift that up and also putting this powder on. Make sure that my sentiment is right where it should be and I'm trying really hard just to get powder on the sentiment itself and then instead of just trying to dump it off I'm going to put this coffee filter on top and flip it as quick as I can just so that the powder stays in the middle and it doesn't just stay in the middle but it's okay just gotta start working at brushing off the little bits of powder. I'm not worried about the circle with the adhesive because that will be covered, but just coming in with a couple little tools, a brush and a pick, and getting the little pieces off from around the letters of the sentiment. Well, there it is, heated up, it worked fine, and so now I'm going to put new adhesive on that circle, and I can put my camera on top. Phew, it worked. <laughs> not the best timing, for uh, embossing a sentiment, but it worked just fine. All right, so here she is off on her nighttime adventure. And as the sentiment says, may your day also be filled with adventure. I hope you enjoyed the card today and it inspired you to have an adventure making a magic iris camera card for yourself. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.